Mallard. Uh, Mr Chairman, I, I, uh, I want to make a, a number of comments and, and, and probably a number of contributions. And the first contribution I want to make, sir, is, is going to deliberately skirt around the standing orders of this House and ask about the diary and organisational planning uh, of the Minister in whose name this bill is. Uh, Mr Speaker, this is a fundamental change to the shape of education and to the ownership of education in New Zealand and for a minister whose name is on this bill to take the very same day that she knew last week she was going to make announcements in the Christchurch to announce that this legislation will go through its detailed phases shows a minister who... Point of order, uh, Tim Mackler. This member is well familiar with standing orders which yet? prevent him from moving in the direction that he is going. And he has uh, already indicated he's skirting on standing I'm orders. The, I ask you to stop. Oh, I'm the judge of this, and um, I look very closely at relevancy um, and ask the member to come back. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, this bill should be the minister in charge's top priority. Mr Speaker, there is another minister who takes responsibility in this area, the Honourable John Banks. It should be his top priority. And I just want to know why we haven't heard from them. We haven't heard from either of them on this fundamental change, a fundamental change to the shape of education in New Zealand. And Mr Speaker, I want to say on part one, I want to make a number of details, detailed comments, but first of all, to make the obvious point that this is not necessary. We actually have in New Zealand, probably within the OECD, the most flexible state education system anywhere. Much more flexible than the United States. Much more flexible than the United Kingdom. Much more flexible than Australia. And, Mr Speaker, it works better than every single one of... Works better than every single one of those countries. And I think it's wonderful that the plummy private school voices opposite are the ones, are the ones who say they're advocating for those who are not succeeding in our system. Mr Speaker, giving this system, like they're giving the electricity system, like they're giving the Air New Zealand system to their mates to run, is not something that's going to improve education. Mr Speaker, I want to ask the Minister in the Chair to tell us what is wrong with Unlimited. What's wrong with it? She doesn't know what Unlimited is. The minister in the chair does not know about one of the most flexible and successful schools in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, ask the minister what she thinks about discovery. She doesn't think a thing. <coughs> Nothing moves. Nothing moves between the ears of that minister when we talk about one of the most successful schools in New Zealand. Sir, a school which, is, which works on very much a community ownership model with an enormous amount of private sector involvement, an enormous amount of private sector involvement in both of those schools under the current system. It works, it is flexible, it is not traditional, and it works, Mr Speaker, because it works in a general context. It works in a context, Mr Speaker, of the current regulations and shows that part one of this bill is absolutely unnecessary to have a flexible approach to education. Uh, my, my colleague Nanaya Mahuta, uh, I, I'm almost certain, is a product of the Kura system. And the, er, the, the early Kura system, one which worked within this legislation, one which worked within this legislation and was exceptionally flexible around the ownership Mr Speaker, the reason, the reason, Mr Speaker, that the, this government, that this government wants to make these changes is not because of the cup of tea arrangement, Mr Speaker. It is not because of the arrangement with ACT, because we know that the papers on this were requested not by John Banks, not by Hekia Parata, but by Anne Tolley. It was Anne Tolley who set 
the system going. Uh, and, Mr yeah. Speaker, to pretend that it's this sort of arrangement is, is clearly not the case. Mr Speaker, I want to move to the question of, of registration and the ability to track teachers who offend. Mr Speaker, I find it abhorrent that any member of this parliament would make it easier. Mr Speaker, Mr Chairman. Um, Mr. I'm Chairman. going to call Chris Hipkins. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.